The first thing that comes to mind when thinking of 86 is the complete lack of subtlety in its metaphor. The premise of the show is that evil robots called the Legion are taking over the world, so the Republic of San Magnolia sends out soldiers from a place called District 86 to fight them. San Magnolia does not view the 86 as people, so they don't count as death statistics. I wonder what a war where a minority is segregated, not treated as people, and sent to a place where they will inevitably be killed could possibly be a metaphor for. This allegory to Nazi Germany is present and obvious. But what I find to be most interesting about the show is the way that it uses this aspect of its setting. While obvious moral lessons of racism bad are shoved down the viewer's throat without any semblance of subtlety or depth, the interactions between the 86 and Major Menise, an actual citizen of San Magnolia who gives the 86 orders from afar in a position known as a handler, were genuinely interesting. Menise believes, and this is like a really hot spicy take so be prepared for this one, that racism is bad. That's her character. Th th that's her belief. That's what she's about. And she really wants to let other people also know that racism is bad. It's an overly simplistic, borderline naive view of the world to believe that she can have any impact on the racism that plagues her nation. And this makes her a genuinely interesting character. A lot of mainstream media presents themes of discrimination as people are just assholes and if you're a bigger asshole then they will change their minds or maybe not change their mind but it's funny because karma even if literally nothing actually changed from this interaction except two assholes got mad at each other for being assholes which is a message that i personally find artistically bankrupt intellectually dishonest and morally wrong to be spread in mainstream blockbuster movies then again, most online discourse nowadays is full of ideas that are artistically bankrupt, intellectually dishonest and morally wrong on numerous different subjects, so maybe that's just a reflection of the world we live in today and nothing to do with racism in and of itself. Regardless of that weird political rant, I think part of why I find Major Belize to be an actually interesting character is that she isn't presented as living in a cruel society, just an apathetic one. In a world where everybody is told to believe a certain fact by their government, it's easier to just blindly follow than it is to actually strive for a better place to live in. This is perhaps best summed up during a scene where she gives a passionate speech to a group of students about how the 86 are actually people too. The students have all become so disassociated from the war and so ingrained with the San Magnolian propaganda that they just ask her why she's acting so crazy. Major Melise is a character that persists in the hope of a better country, and actually does care about the 86. Aside from the time where she never even asked the 86 her names because the show needed more drama between the two and it was really out of character for her and really bad writing and uh, let's, just, let's just not talk about it any more than that. I feel like most people who watch the show will think that Shine is the best character because he is the coolestest, but Melise is the best because she's not and she never tries to be. She actively tries to make the world a better place, and is often punished as a result of this. Put simply, Melisa is pretty base. Which is why season 2 is noticeably worse, as they dropped her from the show almost entirely for the sake of a lolly Dotaru in this greedy edgy war mecha show! I hate the lolly. I don't remember her name. And I'm not even asked to look it up for the script, because I hate her so much. Fortunately, aside from that, huge huge downside. Season 2 does still have a lot of great things going for it. Season 1 had a genuinely interesting episode structure, with half of each episode focusing on the 86 in their camp along the front lines of battle, and the other half focusing on Major Melise's moral conflict in the capital. Once again, the juxtaposition provides obvious but overall shallow development of the themes, but more than that, it provided an aesthetic and narrative duality that led to each episode being paced Perfectly. Season 2 abandons this episode structure in favour of fleshing out the world by exploring the countries neighbouring San Magnolia and how they interact with the 86, San Magnolia, the evil robots and the other neighbouring nations. While neither season is inherently better or worse as a result of the shift in structure in and of itself, other aspects of the plot led to the show gradually dropping from a strong 7 to a light 8 to a weak 7 maybe even falling as low as a strong 6 out of 10 in some of the episodes of the second season. This is because death stops becoming a main concern for the cast halfway through season 1, when the soldiers from the 86th district has been whittled down to a group that feels invincible. 
not in terms of power level, but plot armor, which is hardly ideal when it comes to a dark and edgy war show. Furthermore, one of the biggest weaknesses that the show has is a lack of a real antagonist, and this is unfortunately a case in both seasons. The Legion is just a horde of minus robots, which isn't particularly compelling. And while the show does end up providing a way to make some of the Legion that are supposed to be really important have more of a personality, without spoiling too much, I found the solution was really cool in concept, but kind of cringy in execution. Overall, 86 is definitely one of the better shows from the last year or two, but has too many shortcomings to truly be considered a great series. I'm here.